Yes, my name's uh, Timothy Birch. Uh, I am the sixth generation here on our fruit farm. Uh, currently, we own 262 acres. Uh, of that, 110 are grapes, 75 acres are apples, 10 acres are peaches, and then we have about 20 acres of Christmas trees also. We've been here six generations. Uh, our farm originally started back in 1779. We always haven't been big fruit farmers. Uh, my great-grandfather and grandfather raised a lot of animals. We used to have a four-story chicken barn. Uh, my father and I tore that down, and we built this farm market that we're setting in, which is a 5,000 square foot farm market we built five years ago. We got into the winery business two years ago. We also have a fully licensed bakery that we make fresh fresh baked products every day. And uh, the far end, we have our big produce department. Our farm is located about five miles south of Lake Erie. Uh, we are just about the most southern fruit growing elevation here in Erie County. In this general area right here, we are most notably known for our Concord grapes. Uh, Welch's has the biggest processing plant in the United States here in our hometown. It's also the biggest bottling plant. And uh, with that, there is over 7,000 acres of continuous Concord grapes grown here on the shores of Lake Erie, which uh, makes it a very unique destination right here because nowhere else in the world are grapes so densely planted in such a short square mileage. Uh, here on the shore of Lake Erie, uh, we are very unique. Uh, the grapes are very densely planted. Uh, you can go just about 35 continuous miles and it's nothing but grapes. Even today, the biggest percentage of our grape acreage goes to Welch's or Cliff Star to make grape juice. Uh, getting into the wine business two years ago, we now use a percentage of that acreage for our wines that we make. Uh, when it comes to the apples and the peaches, the marketing's all upon our shoulders. Uh, we direct market to all the grocery stores here in our county. We used to wholesale 95% of the apples and peaches we raised to the grocery stores. Five years ago, we went back into the retail business, and people really enjoy it to come here to the farm, uh, get the stuff as fresh as they can. Being the sixth generation here on our farm, uh, you would think I'd be one of the proudest people around and everything, but today the pressure is just about enough to overcome you to carry it on to the seventh generation. We sell a lot of product when we get all said and done. We don't make a lot of money, and uh, it seems to get tougher and tougher every year, and that's one reason we built this retail market, to uh, hopefully be able to increase our net a little bit and uh, maybe have a little bit more to live off of. Today, with the changing of the chemicals and the food safety issues, uh, there's more and more regulations every year. For example, uh, back in my grandfather's generation, um, they used to put chemicals on the apples, the grapes, and the peaches, and uh, just like we do today, but they use different compounds, and they used to put 10, 15 pounds of product on per acre. Well, today, we use one to two ounces per acre. It cost me pretty near eight to nine times as much as it did two generations ago, and the problem is using such a small percentage of chemical it doesn't last very long, and we find ourselves applying more applications of pesticides than what they used to apply, which is more time, more labor, more wear and tear on the equipment. The problem is each and every spray costs more money. Well, you go back in time, you know, one to two generations ago, they were getting $15 a bushel. Well, we still sell apples at $15 a bushel. And meanwhile, the expenses just go through the roof. And uh, two, three years ago, with fertilizer costs and petroleum costs rising so fast that uh, we actually had to make budget cuts, cut back on how much fertilizer we put on the crops. And it just, you know, you don't have the money, you don't spend it. One of the big challenges, challenges facing us is with all the food scares we've had across the United States, uh, they've implemented additional regulations. The biggest problem is every regulation that's handed down costs us, the producer, more money. We carry crop insurance to uh, help carry on the business in case of a disaster. And uh, I would say on average, 
three out of ten years there has been a need to use that insurance policy, whether it was frost or hailstorm or anything. And uh, crop insurance has been a great thing. Uh, without it, you know, we lose the crop. There's no way to generate any more money, and the insurance carries you through. Not that you can live off of the insurance, but uh, it uh, most certainly helps fill some of that gap of the loss and the disaster you experienced. We, we have carried crop insurance here on our farm operation for three generations continuously. We carry uh, 50% coverage on our grapes. Uh, I carry 50% on my apples with a clause in there on a quality issue. All of our apples are raised for the fresh market. We don't intend on raising any for the processing industry. So if a hailstorm went through and took a little nick out of every apple, my insurance policy would cover it. Uh, The grapes, we carry a 50% coverage that is based on a seven-year production record of tonnage produced annually. Just for example, if I produce 1,000 tons, my average was 1,000 tons for the past seven years, I carry 50% coverage, I would be paid at fair market price for 500 tons. Most of the things that affect the grapes are the spring frost. Uh, This year in particular, we actually lost 20 acres of grapes on May 8th that got froze and they have no grapes on them at all. And, uh, you know, out of 110 acres, 20 acres, I've almost lost 20% of my gross income. The other thing that affects grapes is hailstorms can totally devastate a grape crop. Carrying crop insurance is almost like having a safety net. You're not going to fall all the way to the bottom, but you still can fall. You still can crash a little bit, but you're not going to totally die. It is not a bulletproof vest by any means. It is not going to save the farm. It's not going to make the farm any money, but it will you know, help pay the expenses and hopefully be enough to produce another crop next year. We have future plans of continuing to grow our retail establishment here at our farm market. At the current time, we have nine wineries here in our local town, and it is uh, a great benefit to all businesses here in our town. It uh, helps bring people to Northeast, and, you know, while they're here, they may spend the night, they may go out to dinner, and everybody benefits, and that's great for the whole community. The biggest challenge being the sixth generation and, you know, hopefully getting to the point that my three sons will have a desire to continue on this business that we have here is uh, the challenge is to keep it financially sound, to be able to have your son, not to so to speak, to push him into it, but to have a real dying desire to be a farmer. Farming is does entail very long days, very long hours. If I would keep track of the hours I put in in this operation and what I actually put in my pocket, I would be working for peanuts. But being a farmer, we don't really look at it as a job. It's a lifestyle. You know, I I have uh, friends that help me and stuff, and they're like, Tim, you know, how do you put in an 18, 20-hour day? And I'm like, I'm not. This is my life. This is what I do. And to be a farmer, that's kind of the attitude you have to have. You can't look at it as a job. It is a lifestyle. It's what you do. Ten years ago, if you would ask me if I was going to be making my own wine, I would have said you were crazy. But here I am today. We currently make nine different varieties of wine. I'm working on a couple others. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, hard apple cider to the area with 75 acres of apples. Uh, We are the largest apple producer in the county. I continue to strive forward and, you know, hope and pray it all works out in the end. (laughs) Life of a farmer.